Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be, I think, the sixth update video for the 3D printed everything machine. For those just tuning in, I've been working on a DIY desktop machine that I hope, with the help of 3D printing, will be able to convert into any machine a maker might need, just by 3D printing some parts. I'm not working at the moment, so I've had a lot of spare time, and I've made quite a few attachments since my last video. I was just looking back at where the project started, and man, it's really come a long way. Let me go over some of the new attachments, and then I'll let you guys know what I'm working on next. So now we have a hands-free holder for the micro motor that does a few things, actually. I finally finished the tumbler attachment, so no more using peanut butter jars. Now we have a real rock or parts tumbler. I just finished this vacuum casting attachment that I've been having a lot of fun with. So we're getting really close to having a mini desktop factory at this point. All right, I guess we'll start with the casting attachment. This is probably the easiest method for turning 3D printed parts into metal. You start by filling the bottom half of the mold with Delft clay, and then you're going to pack it really well. Then you're going to take your 3D print or whatever you want to cast, and you're going to push it about halfway into the sand. You're going to dust it really well with talcum powder. Then you're going to attach the top half of the mold, which has a key on it to make sure it stays in the correct position. Then you're going to fill the top half of the mold again and make sure it's packed really well. Then you're going to scoop out a concave shape, which is going to help the molten metal flow. Now you can remove the 3D print. I find if you tap it a few times, it usually just falls right out. Poke a hole where you want the metal to flow, and then the top goes on, followed by this funnel. The mold then gets placed on the vacuum stand, which will eventually be powered by the micro motor, but I haven't finished modeling the pump yet. So for now, you can just plug in a shop vac and it works just fine. What I'm going to be casting here is an alloy called Zamic. It's an aluminum zinc alloy that's really easy to cast. It's cheap and it's really strong. If you want to try casting with it, there's a link to a supplier in my Amazon shop. Next, you're going to turn on the vacuum and just pour. One negative of this casting method is that because the vacuum does such a good job sucking the metal into the mold, you get flashing around the edges of your cast, where the two halves of the mold meet. I'm hoping that the final micro motor vacuum will be a little weaker and won't cause this anymore, but even if it doesn't, it's a small price to pay, because the flashing is easy to remove, and if you look here, the vacuum allows for so much more detail than gravity alone. As you can see, I was able to even pick up the layer lines from the 3D print. So given a choice, I'd rather have some flashing with perfect detail than no flashing with no detail. And a little cleanup with the micro motor and the flashing comes right off. The next new file is a holder for the micro motor, which I've been finding a ton of uses for. I've been working on a 3D printed functional rocket launcher and I needed to fabricate the wooden tube covers. And for that, this new file really came in handy. So these parts are fresh off the printer and I wanted to give them a faux wood finish. So you start by sliding the machine back turn the base 90 degrees. As you can see, it's really wonky, so we want to fix that. This support piece snaps into the bottom, and now when the base is flush with the table, it's much stiffer. This is a skateboard bearing. They're really cheap. You can get a package of 20 for like 8 bucks. If you're a project backer, you're going to want to grab a pack because there's several future attachments that will be using them. This ER16 collet holder is the same size as what's used on the main spindle, and it can be used to hold a ton of different attachments and jigs. I'm using a 3D printed custom jig to hold my work on a threaded rod. One end will go into the main chuck, and the other end gets inserted into the bearing. You can adjust the height to ensure it's level, and now you can spin pretty much anything between centers with no limit on length like there is with the lathe attachment. Here I'm using the jig to sand out the print lines to prep for painting. The paint I'm using is this Rust-Oleum Warm Caramel, and the wood grain effect I'm about to show you came from the Off Earth YouTube channel. Check it out, he does a fantastic tutorial. I like the setup because it makes painting really easy, and it works really well for resin coating too. I sometimes use it as a rotary curing rack for UV resin. I made a little fan blade from a piece of sheet metal, and if I position the micromotor holder towards my workpiece, it helps the paint dry in just a minute or two. This is why I love this machine. You can customize it so easily for whatever weird need you might have in the moment. For this faux wood effect, we're using Copic Ink Mahogany, Walnut, and Light Walnut. And the process couldn't be easier. You're just going to dribble on one color at a time, and then with a cheap hardware store paintbrush, you're going to blend the colors, ensuring you maintain a single direction with your brush strokes. Unlike regular painting, you don't care about brush marks. As a matter of fact, it's the brush strokes that create the effect. You're going to just keep alternating between colors until you're happy with the effect. Doesn't this look so real? I love this technique. 
You can spin it for another minute or two if you want it to dry faster. The hands-free holder can be used as a mini drill press or drill guide. You can print a compliant mechanism to function as a mini cross slide if you have very precise drilling or milling that you need to do. It can be positioned next to the lathe if you have something in the chuck that you might want to drill or mill. Or the entire holder can be removed from the stand and if you bend it 90 degrees, it has a flat bottom so you can position it on the table and use it manually if you want to perform a manual operation on the fly, but maybe you need a little more stability than the micromotor alone can offer. Sometimes I have something small that I need to cut and I don't want to waste time turning the machine into a dedicated saw. So if what I need to cut fits in an E16 collet, the stand lets me use the micromotor as a mini saw. And with a 3D printed rotary chuck, the holder converts into a glass bottle cutter. I'm getting so much use out of this stand. And the final attachment this week is the tumbler. No more peanut butter jars. Now we have a real tumbler, and it's pretty big. It's got octagon shaped walls, so it should be a pretty aggressive tumbler with plenty of space inside to fit a lot of material. The top screws on. And the stand uses those same cheap skateboard bearings I mentioned earlier. The motor's really powerful, so I imagine if you had a need for it, you could print several barrels and daisy chain them to all run together off one motor. I mean, I haven't tried it yet, but I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. For those interested in supporting the project and 3D printing their own everything machine, I'm offering access to all the current and future upgrade files for a minimum donation of 10 bucks. A few people have suggested that I raise the donation fee now that the project has so many attachments, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep the project as accessible as possible. That said, a few of you guys have donated more than the $10 minimum, and considering I'm not working at the moment, this extra money has been a lifesaver. So I've been brainstorming ideas for maybe creating some sort of reward tier like Kickstarter has for people who donated extra. And then I thought, if I need to raise money, why don't I just do an actual Kickstarter? I've worked in product development for over a decade, and over the years, I've developed several unique products that I've always wanted to launch. One of them was an all-in-one everyday carry tool, similar to one of the many metal EDC tools already on the market. You know the type, the ones that fit in your wallet. Only mine will have a unique twist, a really cool unique twist. I think you guys are really going to like it. I'll be sharing more information on the product in a future video, but I thought as a reward to show my appreciation for those who donated more than required towards this project, I'll be automatically including everyone into this future Kickstarter who gave or gives $30 or more. So if you gave at least 30 bucks, be expecting an email from me when we start shipping because I'll need your delivery address. I think this works, selling an everything tool to fund the everything machine. This way I'll be able to keep the project going without having to raise the minimum $10 donation fee. Uh, we finally have a private Discord for backers now, so if you're a backer and you haven't gotten your invitation yet, shoot me an email and I'll send you a link. I recently got a new 3D printer and it's enormous. I have several upcoming projects requiring some really big prints that neither of my current printers could handle, so I started researching options for a bigger machine and I came across this. The Elegoo Neptune 4 Max. Apparently it has an almost 600 degree nozzle, direct drive extruder, which means in theory it should be able to print nylon, TPU, ABS if I enclose it, almost 500 millimeter build volume, 500 millimeter a second print speed, auto leveling, comes with clipper. Look at the size of this bed. Here it is with an Ender 3 build plate for comparison. It's like four times the size. I think this machine had some issues when it was first released, but it's my understanding they've been resolved with firmware updates, and now it's a solid machine. But we'll see. I have high hopes. I'm going to use this machine to print drones and rocketry projects, and if it works the way I hope, I'll be able to print entire fixed-wing drones or rockets in one or two pieces. It's going to save me a ton of assembly time. Today, I got some aluminum tube from China and this huge M36 tap that I'm hoping will allow me to make an all-metal rocket motor. I'll cut the nozzles using the everything machine, and if it works, I'll have really powerful all-metal rocket motors for about 10 bucks in materials. I'm going to use this printer to hopefully print rockets in just one or two pieces. After I get this machine assembled and running, I'll do a separate video and review on it. On paper, it checks all the boxes, but it's just hard to believe because it's so cheap.
Anyway guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. If you're interested in building your own everything machine, I'll put all the info in the video description. I have a bunch of new conversions almost finished. Lately I've been posting a lot more short form content on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube shorts. I don't have time to make a full video for every attachment or conversion, so if you want to see everything the machine can do, check out Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube shorts. I try and film at least a short form video for every new attachment. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.